in a separate plastic bag from the components that we installed were these four components. It's a uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor, a 1 millihenry coil, and a 1 ohm and a 1 mega ohm resistor. So let's turn it on and see what it looks like. So it's set up for resistance right now. I guess it's done some self-checking and it's sitting and waiting, I guess. We'll try this resistor first. It's either a 1 ohm or 1 mega ohm resistor. And it looks like a 1 ohm resistor. The other resistor must be the one mega ohm. There we go. One mega ohm looks pretty good. This does not automatically detect resistor inductor capacitor. So if we want to put, say, the inductor in, we have an RCL button down here. We'll change it to L. I think this is a series parallel because it does indicate, uh, I think, a series or parallel resistance. One millihenry. That's pretty damn close. And then we'll change to capacitor. Stick the capacitor in. And there we have 100 nanofarads would be equal to 0 0.1 microfarads. That may be a little high, but this is a pretty cheap capacitor. Take it out. It should go back to null. There we go. Now there is a menu, but I don't know how to use it. The menu comes by pressing this RCO button and holding it. Okay, and it, this gives us our default settings, or at least the settings the machine is in now. So I'm not sure how to maneuver around this. I'll have to read the manual. This constitutes the case. This bag of corners, screws, and push button extenders. Uh, two end caps. A front. And a back and a bottom and a top. Now these are covered with a white smoky plastic. Guess we'll first of all take all the plastic off. Now you could leave the plastic on all the pieces except the top. And I'm going to take it all off. Okay. I've cleaned all the uh, covering off. Now these corners, and there's four of them, 
they're all identical but they're not invertible <laughs> they look the same top and bottom but they aren't I've got these three cutouts this is the bottom you can tell it because it's the shortest distance between a cutout and an end see this is slightly longer and of course this is nothing so that's the bottom and the reason that we do this is so that the board will fit like this just like that and we want to use the bottom the bottom of course has no holes in it and it's very very tight to screw this in so there's one corner fastened to the bottom and the bottom of the corner is fastened we'll do the opposite corner back is in I'll tighten the screws up a little tighter now that the back's in okay my sides will fit like this but I think first I'm going to put the board in use the back I'll put the board in and you see it's it's stuck in that lower uh, notch and if I put the other corners on the board will be captive Well, the circuit board's captive now that just three corners are in. Put the fourth corner in, making sure it's in the right direction. Now there's no holes in the uh, sides and front, so I'll be able to just slide them down in. And do it back here. Like that, well, it did in there. Like that. I can't just drop the bottom, the back in, because we've got a hole in it and a projecting switch. So I have to put the back on first, then the device in and then work my way around.
So there we have all four corners, two ends back and front installed, and the caps. Just set the top in place. Get the caps through the holes. One. There we go. Start these screws. So there we have it. Assume this plug will still reach in there. We'll turn it on. I should have cleaned the glass. And there we are. Well, I'm going to wrap this video up and study the user's guide. I have a 8.5 uh, by 11 user's guide that I cobbled together. And it'll be in the subdirectory, that good old subdirectory below. As long as we're pointing down, let's point up. I could use a couple of likes. The next video series, or video, I don't know if it would be a series, will be how to use this thing. Frankly, at this point, I don't know how to use it. <laughs>